right, so just to give you, again, as a quick understanding of what we're doing here, I know the masks are a little bit awkward, just a little bit uncomfortable, but we're going to get through this. It's one, one small phase and a blip in time. Um, I would suggest you guys try to kind of get a different scope of, on this. And so everyone's complaining now how much they don't have. We can't do this. We can't do that. A lot of you guys don't know what it was like training back in the old days. So to give you a little perspective, when I first started training this, my first seminar was, I don't know, somewhere in Connecticut, two and a half hours away. And I was training in a karate school with Artie. Some of you guys know Artie. And it was funny because we had nothing. I came back my first day. We happened to have a little mat, like a, from a high school mat, a little five by four mat we would pull out and practice judo on. So I would, 15 minutes before class, come out, pull that mat. Me and Artie would work out some moves, show them the mount, show them a position. We were like super excited because, you know, karate schools are not exactly very forgiving like this. My teacher was a little bit more, he gave me a little bit of room, let the leash out a little bit. And so to have one small little mat and 10 minutes before class to train, we were, we were ecstatic. And then after class, we could train for 10 more minutes. Ooh, big deal, right? But then sometimes even the mat wouldn't be available because people would be training. We couldn't get the mat. And by the time they were done changing, not training, changing actually, that was it. So we go, oh, we, oh, get on the floor. We just, we lay on the wood floor. And so we win the mount and the guard pass and all this stuff on the wood floor, banging our elbows up, getting used to it. But again, never complaining. Super happy and, and grateful that the instructor will let us do this. And now you fast forward to a time period like this with this. And I know it's like a lot's been taken from you. But if I put this situation back there with one of my friends could train and do stuff with a room full of mats, it would change the whole perspective. How much of our training we just did on our own. Um. I would train with a guy up upstate every couple of months we'd get together. And every time I'd go back, he'd accuse me, where are you training? What school are you going to? I'm not going to any school. That was a big thing back then, you know. Creon, you don't go to a different school. I'm not going anywhere. What's up? No, you're getting too good. You're much more relaxed than last time. You're doing this. You're just... And all I did was what we're going to do tonight. And it sounds silly, and it really is very simple. It's what we recommend everybody does before class is just visualization. Sports teams pay coaches time thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars to teach athletes to visualize and go through movements. And that's all we're going to do here. Okay. So we're going to do every class. We'll run through some basic jumping jacks, some warm ups, get a little bit of the blood flowing. Sometimes we'll do some, maybe some yoga positions, but mostly it's going to be all jujitsu movements. And the trick is going to be for you guys, not just to go through the lazy movement, but to think about every detail, muscular alignment, skeletal alignment, and keep things right. We'll rep out a bunch. We'll go to another move. Okay. So let's start with the basic clinch, where you're going to have kind of an opponent. And again, if I went through it kind of sloppy, I could have my opponent in front of me, backing up a little bit, step in and clinch, wrap the body, pull him in. Where my feet go, I have to be very specific. Pull the guy in, he falls, I step, he goes down, and I finish my mount. Okay. Let's just start doing this, and I'm going to try to pick out if I can see where you guys are getting kind of silly or sloppy. The key is here, guys. You've got to really imagine every piece of it. Like, I'm really here. If I'm going to run into the guy and just mimic the move and just step up like this, but there's no tension in my arms, my shoulders aren't really raw, everything's just kind of lazy, I just do this. If I was really going to get hit, it wouldn't work. So when you do the move, you really got to kind of step in. When I step and clinch, my shoulders are rolling in, I'm stepping in. And if you ran into me right now, you'd feel a solidness to it. It's got to be embodied. 100%. And that's where people get lazy. You don't embody it 100%, you're wasting your time. Okay? So it should get tiring. So, again, keep that in mind. Pace yourself out with the mask. Okay? Again, putting meanings and stuff behind it. How many people train professional fighters for high altitude fights? They put on the oxygen deprivation mask and work with that, right? That's what this is. It's depriving you a little bit. Not unhealthy. Stop. Take a few breaths if you have to. Relax. Clear it out and go again. Okay, don't push past it. Learn to get used to it a little bit, like any other discomfort of jujitsu. All right. So when you're in your spot, kind of play back, get your position. When you're ready, just step in. I'm not going to count it out. I want you guys to get in your own head. So you're going to work at your own pace, your own reps. Hit, wrap the body, pull the guy in, step for the position, finish, go to the mount and maintain. Stand the base and start again. Okay, make sense. All right, one, two. Let's try it. Okay, so two quick things to point out now. You're kind of staying here. You're stepping in. You're kind of going up. 
and you step. You kind of have this, this up and down. So you kind of got this thing going on. Then you grab the guy and you went like this. Like you're holding on a subway platform or something. What grip is this? I don't know what this grip is. This is no grip. Okay? You're coming in. You're stepping in pretty solid and straight. But then you're hugging the guy like this. That doesn't exist. The guy's chest is here. Hit. His chest, his body is here. I'm around and I'm coming in and getting the whole grip. My elbow should be down a little bit. So really, again, you got to put something real there in your mind that's not there. Okay? Keep repping it out. So keep it tighter, Dante, on the movement. So you're doing this, and now you're doing this. You're being more dramatic. You've never clinched like that before. So you're having a hard time visual, which is fine, right? Step in. Don't do what he just did. It's here. It's straight in. I should push this way. I'm here. I'm pushing straight off my leg, stepping in. The hands drop and come around. That's about the waist. So don't do too big. Drop them down and come around the way. Yeah, much better. Okay, watch this breakdown now for a second, doctor. So now you're, you're going here. You're stepping in. As you're wrapping, you're going like this. And then you're laying down. But the breakdown really is clinch and hit, wrap the guy, bend him backwards. He falls. My weight's already off this foot. As he's going, my foot catches my balance, and then I finish. So again, you're going to start to see how many details are in your brain, either blurry or just not there, which means when you're doing it for real, even though it may go well and it may work pretty good, you're kind of getting a little bit lucky. And the person's movement is like bringing you along. So what happens is it's like singing along to your favorite song in the car, and you're singing. And you almost sound like, yeah, I think I sound pretty good. You realize, first of all, you're hearing most of the song in the background. But if you turned it off, or I put you on karaoke, and didn't put the words on the bottom of the timing, you'd be surprised how grossly off you are. Because there are little cues when the person sees you do hear it. And you might be a millisecond behind it, but it doesn't sound like you are. It doesn't feel like you are. Because you have a, a cue, right? So when you're doing these movements, the person falls you're more likely to do it more correctly because you're with a visual or a physical cue that helps pull you along right. But without the cue, can you still do it? And that's what we're working on now. We're working on karaoke now, in a way, if that makes sense. Okay? Keep going. Let's try it. Because that's skinny. Right. Now, when you step, as he's falling, you step. Arms bungee caught out. Oh, look at your left arm. Look at your left arm. Yeah. Details like this make now hand, knee. Right knee goes down. Left hand goes down, slide the other, no, 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 slide it over his thigh, remember? So look, I just fell. I just fell. One knee mounted. This hand went down. This knee's coming over, this thigh. So either step it over or slide it over and let your foot, yeah, exactly. It's okay if the movement's a little exaggerated, because at least it shows an understanding and a thought process. And now once you're there, a couple of mount-maintain movements. He pushed the chest, hooked the head. Freeze. Wait his head. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. It matters. I should be able, when this is done, I should be able to take this video and green screen an opponent. And it would look perfect. Right? But if, you, if you're doing the mount here and you're swimming, block head this way. Block head this way. What's this? Where's the head? Up here? And if the head's up here, is this small? If it's there, it's here. Head. Head. Swim. Right? It's all got to be right. So you could green screen on a fake. Like I can have Richie over there doing the opposite pretending. Be a cool thing if we could do that, right? Now Richie could be on the bottom and pretend to push, push, push up. So that's what we did that. Push, push, push up. And then I go by myself. Push, push, push up. And then we green screen them together. How good would it look? Let's try it a few more minutes. Again, if you need a breath with the mask. Take a second. Take a breather. Yeah. Hand, knee. Slide that knee over his thigh now. There you go. Perfect. Now, now, you, now you mount. Left. Right. Good. He pushes up. You swim. He pushes your chest up. Push it up again. Swim. Swim through. Okay. Went the hips that time. Good. See, if I can see what you're doing, it's good. I can see with the hip motion that time. This time the chest. Let me see the swim. Good. Good. Americana. Let me see Americana. Smack him in the face. His hands come up. No, smack him in the face. Make his hands come up. His hands come up the block. 
push it down with the elbow on the wrist. Let me see it. Keep going. Yeah, a little confusing now. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to visualize. Never going to happen. Go again. Never going to happen like that. So you just went like this. You smacked. You push it down. You went like this. Watch this. I got his arm. Elbow to the floor. Under his arm. Grab my wrist. And finish. Elbow to the floor. Left elbow to the floor. Close your left hand. Look at your left hand. Yeah, no, no. You got a hook, remember? There's a wrist in there. Under his elbow. Get your own wrist. Head down. Turn to the side. Pull it up. There you go. And when you do this, guys, in as much feel the resistance that's there. So it's not just push the elbow for the Americana. Put the elbow down. Under. And I'll be a little dramatic here, right? Under his elbow. Grab my wrist. Head here. I'm even doing this with some tension in my body to imagine the resistance, okay? Even imagine the resistance on the guy, okay? Keep going. Stand up where his chest would be, wherever you want it. Now just do the spinning arm lock. Yeah, not easy. Find the balance. If you want to, we'll put two together. Not bad, All right, but it's good. All right, we're gonna get there. Now when you do it, don't hold, don't cheat. Try to hold the pad the right way. Hand over hand is easier, I think, usually. CPR. There you go, beautiful. Now, the value you get out of this, guys, is the value you bring to it and the value you put into it. So look at your arms. You're doing it again, Anthony. You're twisting the guy. You're doing this again. Uh, and the mass doesn't help. So, But it does. In some ways, it helps. It doesn't help. It'll be a good unit. Again, what you make of it. We make the mask a good thing. When you guys go back to training normal and you strip the mask off and now you have a party, man, it's going to feel like you just took a weight vest off your chest. Okay? So stop getting distracted by this thing. I can't breathe. Uh. Come on, move on, right? Um, all right, so let's work some bottom guard stuff to give you guys a chance to kind of cool down a little bit and make life easier. We'll start with bottom guard. Um, again, feet crossed. Now, you'll notice, as you guys all know, my legs aren't that limber, right? I am never real. Let's deck. I can cross my feet on Declan, but even then, it's more like pinky toe, big toe. Like my feet halfway overlap. So, in this position, I will actually cross my feet and try to open my legs. I'll do the thing I can't ever normally do to give my body some feeling of, oh, that's what it's supposed to feel like eventually. So some things you can mimic. I mean, like, look, how skinny is the person between my knees right now? Because my knees don't open up. But if I'm looking to develop a certain flexibility, I'm working on it. Like, so, right, so your, your legs cross. Like, oh, you all your legs guys cross really well. So really, when you're in the bottom guard, when you guys cross your feet, how do you really cross them? Are they lazy? What do they really look like, Dante? I try to hook them. Okay, what do they really look like, Anthony? They really look like that in someone in the guard? And you, same thing? Yeah, you're flexible like that. Okay, so you're all kind of doing the right thing. What I tend to tell people to do is their feet, right? Don't just put your feet and lay them over. Really make them 90 degrees and bend them back so they're actually cross length, right? And so work on that, right? It's a good position, a very strong position. Remember, the guard is meant to do this to hold my opponent while being very relaxed. This is supposed to be like an easy hold, like, like those little finger, finger handcuffs you saw as a kid. Very simple to put my feet like this, very difficult to get out. Okay, so from here, guy's in my guard, I'm holding his arm. He puts his hand on the floor. I grab his wrist, uncross my feet, move my elbow appropriately, sit up, scoop my butt, catch the wrist, lay back. Trap the leg, let this foot die, hips, shoulders, hips, shoulders, maybe put this foot on his knee, which means it comes up on top of the knee, controls the knee here, and then finish the rest of the move, okay? Reach through, now go through his arm, where's his arm? Here. Yep, yep, but go around it, nope, you went right through it that time, nope, look at it, look at it. Put an image there for a second. Where is his arm? Reach over his elbow towards me. Go between your knee and your hand. Yes, that's the movement. Subtle, but it's, again, it's the ability to see what's there when it's not. This is where it gets hard. So Dante's having a little trouble with this. So what Dante's kind of doing is he's, first of all, let me go this way. I got the feet crossed. I grabbed the hand. Uncross. When I sit up, remember, when I have his hand, it's easier. Because I have some leverage against the arm to pull. A little harder now. I move my elbow. I sit up. 
It would be easier if I had the grip. When I grab my wrist, Anthony, do I grab my wrist like this? Why not? Because his arm is here. I gotta go around his arm, through the hole, and grab it. Now I lay back. Now I trap the leg. How do I move now? Is it like an elbow escape? Do I go like this and just move my whole body? No, it's gonna be little by little. I trap the leg. First the hip scoots just a little bit. And if it scoots, this leg can't stay here. Both my legs don't do this. Wrong move, right? I trap the leg. This leg kind of dies. And just my hip squirts out. And now my shoulders. Now my hips. Shoulders, hips, shoulders, hips, shoulders. And now if I want, I can block the knee on a more advanced version and just finish the move. Okay? So it's really, again, breaking down small details of movement and seeing the person there. Because if I got in every one of your guards, you would do it really pretty much perfect. You guys don't need help on these little movements. But now with nobody there, it elevates the need for imagination and feeling, okay? So try it a few more times. Visualizing it, it's a lot different than having Not easy. There. It's not easy. You know when it's easy, guys? Hey, hold on a second. Visualization for me, personally, not that, I'm, not, that I'm, not that I'm gifted at visualization. It's more a point of a piece of my thinking that back in the day was literally the only thing I had. And I was obsessed with learning this thing. If you're obsessed with it, like you see the high times of people in music, what well, different things you guys know. You get, you get, you're a numbers guy. Numbers just roll through your head. If you're having a problem at work that requires some type of mathematical type solution, I don't think you could turn your brain off till it's done. The numbers just put it, like a little computer. They're floating up there. All of a sudden, wait, that's right. This, and they fall into place. Because Now, how do you train me to do that? Kind of hard because you're just doing it. There's a certain commitment or obsession, which is not a great word, but there's a commitment to it, a fervor to wanting to learn. You're, you're grasping and reaching for the knowledge so much so that you can't turn it off. And that was me. That was us. That was my generation. We would joke and say, man, what are you doing? You're driving around in a car. When you get into traffic, what do you think of the traffic light? What do you mean? What am I thinking? Uh, honestly, yeah, yeah. How to pass that guy's guard from last night? Yeah, you do. You don't stop thinking about it. If I put the leg here, I did. And now, so I'm running the whole fights through my head. I'm not visualizing here, which is hard with the body. Now I'm visualizing in a car with everything. Everything's in my head. My position, if I press the guy's leg here, I have to feel my position to strengthen the weight of my movement. If I push his knee down, his hips want to turn a little bit. The knee wants to come across. So I want to bring my arm down. Like, I'm picturing the entire thing playing out. Picturing it so much, I'm feeling, like as I'm driving, I'll feel my elbow press like, like I'm pressing the guy's. It, muscles just start to react a little bit. You ever have a dream? And it could be any silly dream where you could be falling or you're working. Or you, again, stuff, usually stuff from your life, right? When I was in karate, you'd be dreaming about kick. I was like, my foot would just kick. My muscle would just twitch. Or you feel like you're falling and you're, you kind of wake up with that feeling. Well, clearly you weren't falling. And clearly I wasn't trying to kick something. But my mind got me so engrossed in the moment that my body and synapses didn't know it was fake. And my leg twitched to kick. Or you kind of lurch up because you feel your stomach. You, you feel like your body thinks you're falling. That's kind of a subconscious commitment to the visualization. You're trying to get more of that on purpose now. And so that's the point. Just really trying to engulf yourself in the thing which is sometimes difficult to do if it's not natural. I couldn't do your numbers thing. So I just watch numbers floating around and try to figure this out. And put the, Each piece of the puzzle falls into place. Oh, that's right. And I think about that. I'd have to think about that more. It's more of an effort to do the thing to let it happen naturally. But the truth is, you've got to try it a little bit and then relax and let it unfold. And then try it a little more and relax and let it unfold. And keep going back and forth between trying to work something against your natural predisposition of doing it, let your body learn what it's trying to do, and then relax and see if your body can do it. And then try it some more. And then relax and do it. So it's a constant molding, like a potter, potter's wheel, moving the clay just enough that it takes shape without going too much and you just ruin the whole thing. So you got to play with that balance back and forth like that. Okay? So let's start from the Kimura now. Let's go from the Kimura. The Kimura fails. Hold the elbow. Bump sweep. Okay, go. Freeze. Look at your left foot. What's the position of your left foot? What should it be? Yes. So go again. So again, details like this, you're really just carving away little mistakes, 
inserting good movements. Now you can't go so high. You're going very high in the air for one. So go, go high. No, just keep on like on the bump part. Do the bump part and freeze in the middle. Keep coming over. Yeah, your body's never that high for real because my body's on your leg. So put your knee on the floor. Yeah, now bump up and over. Keep coming over like that. That's really the movement. If I got in between your legs and did the move, you would never lift your body and have both of your knees in the air with me floating in the air all of a sudden. Right? So when you guys are there, imagine the weight that's on you, the pressure in the hip. You're trying to bump over. The foot stays straight. The hip, the knee stays, stays there. The hip goes. The leg finishes. Okay? Feel the weight that's there. Five more, guys. Yes. Much better, Dante. Are you feeling the weight more now? Are you kind of getting the... Yeah. Roll over to your knee. Slow. Slow. Keep going. Bring your right knee down. Is that okay? Okay. So again, you got to feel you. If it doesn't, if it hurts, it hurts. Don't do it. But don't do the move wrong if doing it correctly hurts. You're not helping yourself because you're not making a modification that's something that could be done. You're making a, a false modification. And so therefore, training a false ability to do the move. So there's the concept. Yeah, look, it's, yeah, of course it's different, right? It's something if you've never done it before. And a lot of you have done this. Sometimes you come in class early and work things by yourself. But sometimes I see stuff, it's just not right. Like you, the move looks goofy. You're trying to do the move, but you're not visualizing it right. Um, all the grips. Like even when I do punch block series, if I'm doing bottom guard and a guy just comes in, I have to block his arms. Even when I hit my arm like this, my hand looks kind of goofy like this. But if you came up and put your arm in this position, it would fit. It would fit your arm with tape. But my hand just doesn't go like this. Because your arm is going this way. My hand already melts to the shape of your arm. So I'm here, block the punch. My hand is melting to the shape of where your bicep it just it's done it like this so many years. The thumb is not here. The thumb is out of the way. And it's that movement that's catching the arm, breaking over a little bit more even, depending on the position I'm working. But even those little inflections of the fingers make a big difference, understanding where your body goes. So when, you do, when you do the regular move, like this has to become easy. The pinky might even get out of the way a little bit. So it all depends on how much you're visualizing and how much you're dictating to it, okay? The mask is how bothersome. It's good. You like it? You want to leave it on forever? Oh, it's not that good then. <laughs> yeah, so keep in mind, guys, I hear all day at work, I'm sure you hear it too, oh, the mask, the mask. I have never heard so much complaints about, look, do I, do I like this? No, my face is sweaty right now. I'm not enjoying it. But, you know, this is a lot less discomforting than someone laying top side of me trying to smash my lungs out. I deal with that, though. It's, you know, I, that's my definition of fun. But the truth is, it's a discomfort and an annoyance that I just learn to deal with and I move on with. Um, and really, as martial artists, that's kind of what you do. That's kind of the lifestyle of the martial artist a little bit. That's one of the things you should be learning here. You know, in jujitsu, it's funny. We've had guys... Unlike karate, so you've done, you've, done, you've, done, you've done some karate, stuff like that. The traditional things in the past, everybody that came in was kind of a martial artist. You didn't really have what we have now, where you can cross-section the jiu-jitsu world between athletes and martial artists. So you kind of get that a little bit. And it's funny, years ago, we're talking about it years ago, I forget, Declan might have been a yellow belt at the time. And after a big conversation about that, we left in the car and he asked me, well, am I an athlete or a martial artist? So my typical response is, what do you think you are? I'm not going to tell you what you are. What do you think you are? And the question never went answered. Um, it wasn't meant to be answered. For me, it was a rhetorical response just to go, you think about that. But then you watch the way the person develops in, in the room and what you do and how this room allows you to become the, the person you are. It gives you directions to turn from or turn to. It gives you ways to deal with stuff like a mask. And so in situations like this with the COVID, I think I've told some people, some of you guys are on Facebook, I've told some people on Facebook about this a little bit, that we went pretty much, I think within the first week we closed, we just started doing live broadcasts. And I, we got nothing else to do. And then little by little, I started, there, Anthony jumped in with tons of work with the microphones to make it sound better. And I put the monitor up, all this stuff to go. Um, and for me, it was kind of easy. It almost gave me something to do, right? I mean, every day, four o'clock, I go to work, I come here, it's something to do. Um, but Declan jumped in, never, I mean, really, we probably broadcast over 80 or 90 days at this time. Um, he does the thing with me five days a week. Then he does the kids Tuesday and Thursday at 5 o'clock. Saturday, 
at 11 o'clock. So three days a week with the kids, five days a week with me. Never complained about it once. It wasn't always in the mood. You ready? Yeah. yeah me too. Ah, I'm ready. Yeah, let's go. Well, the point is that's what a martial artist does. Now, martial artists don't own that right. That's not what we don't have sole ownership to that thing. It's a personality thing. It's a trait. It's a virtue. 100%. Martial arts is just one fantastic vehicle that allows you to cultivate that, see it, decide if you want to do it or not. And for me, this mask and certain limitations are no different. I'm not going to let these things, as much as I could say, man, this really sucks. Sick. I got five boxes. I got to be by myself. People have to come in. We leave. You leave first. You leave second. Stay six feet apart. Go outside off my prop. I could focus on that. The place could have burnt down last year, too. I could have nothing. So it's really how I focus on what I look at and what I do with it, what I have. So this room, this martial art, this thing is just a great vehicle to discover and cultivate virtue. You know, so I would, if I was you guys, I'd look at it like that. You guys deal with the mass fight. You see one, I'm watching for it. I'm watching for, I'm watching for that stuff. I'm watching, you guys, you're dealing with it. You just, you know what, it's on. That's it. You know, maybe you wear it all day at work. I don't wear it a lot at work. I'm in a position where I can really afford to be far enough away. I'm all day like this because I'm far from everybody. The second you're getting closer, I go into a closed room. Then it goes up because I don't want to like contaminate the room, right? Out of consideration. But I, all day long, I hear more complaints about this stuff. I can't breathe. I can't. Really? You can't breathe? You know, it really is kind of sad sometimes the way some people just behave and get over dramatic. Come on, get on with your life. Just deal with it. This is a short-lived thing. You know, I don't play the big political agenda. Get on with my life and go. This is going to be over quick enough. And while it's over, what good can come of it? You know, some of the guys come on Facebook every day for a long time. We had a lot of great stuff that comes from this. A lot of opportunity. I get to spend a lot of time with your grandchildren. They've been training a lot on the, on the Zoom and, and having a good time. The kids are staying connected. You know, how many parents are staying home with their kids every day having dinner? They see the kids every day and a good thing. Now, there's some not-so-good things happen. Divorce rate's going up a little bit, I think. Domestic abuse has gone up a little bit. So there's not all, you know, it's not all unicorns and rainbows, right? But for you and your world, we make the best of it. So I say just let's, let's embrace it and do it, okay? So we'll continue to train like this. We'll put some videos out. And show people how we're going to do it. But I think um, I think you guys, if you did this for a month or two, you will see benefit that you would never see otherwise. This is a unique benefit opportunity to train like this. Um, and because you're forced to now, if there's no other option, you might more fully embrace it. Okay? All right. It's good. Let's stand up. Bye, right, guys.